Yes, hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is the Clarets Daily News here on Turfcast. And obviously just as a sort of like a information, I'm recording this at five past 11 on Thursday morning and we all know how mad the transfer window has been over the last week, two weeks for the Clarets. So by the time this is even edited and put out there, some stuff could be out of date. But if you're watching this later tonight, the chances are a lot of things will be out of date. But I'll obviously try and round up what I can, where I can. And obviously the main news is that Sander Burge has now officially joined Fulham. The club announced it today at 10am. They said, we can confirm that Sander Berg has signed Fulham. Uh, sorry, for Fulham in a, in a permanent move for an undisclosed fee. The club would like to wish Sander all the best and thank him for his efforts during his 12 months at Turf Moor. Now, according to Fabrizio Romano, he signed a five-year deal at Craven Cottage, which is obviously quite a big contract. Um, so they obviously you know, rate him highly, as they should. He's a Premier League player and I think he'll do very well there. It's a shame to see him leave. And I've said this on Twitter and I got a bit of pushback from it, to be honest, but... I think we've shown so far that we can cope without him, but a lot of people do keep saying, how can you say that? It's two games. It's just in them two games. We've just been very good, haven't we? We scored nine goals, six points, and he hasn't played a single minute in them two games. I have every faith that Brownell and Cullen are two of the best midfielders in this league, and then obviously not forgetting you've got Han Norma Sengo, if he stays, and then any potential additions as well um, for the middle of the middle of the park. So it's a shame to see him leave, but... I do think we'll be okay without him. I still think we have enough to get out of this league without Sanderberg. But on the club's official website, they said Burnley Football Club can confirm that Sanderberg has signed for Fulham in a permanent move for an undisclosed fee. The midfielder joined the Clarets in the summer of 2023 and his 40 appearances across last season in all competitions saw Berg win the club's Player of the Year and Player's Player of the Year awards. The club would like to wish Sander all the best and thank him for his efforts during his 12 months at the club. According to different sources on Twitter, uh, the move is worth around £20 million. Obviously, we reported this a couple of days ago, but just for those of you that um, didn't see that, I think it was Andy Jones that originally reported it from The Athletic, obviously the local Burnley reporter at The Athletic. Um, uh, but apparently it's £20 million plus £5 million in very achievable add-ons, so nothing like Fulham to win the league or Fulham to win the Champions League probably a case of certain amount of appearances if they are very achievable even goals as well but yeah it's a shame to see Sander leave like I say but I, th I think we'll be alright without him Elsewhere, another outgoing, and I know I mentioned this on yesterday's show, but I just want to pick up something that Sasha Tovaliri has said, of course, the Belgian journalist. I did mention on yesterday's show that Valtbeg goes to Ajax. That, that was the club. There was a lot of reports of Trabzonspor. That was rubbish. Ajax were the club that he was talking to, that he was very close to, and that he wanted to go. Well, Sasha Tovaliri has now put that out there. Uh, he said on Twitter uh, yesterday, another outgoing in the pipeline for the Clarets, being told about Veghorst's now very confident a deal can be done between Ajax, Amsterdam and Burnley FC. Veghorst pushing for this move as he wants to come back to the Eredivisie. Wait and see. Like I said, this one's expected. We've all expected him to, to leave. None of us expected him to even wear the shirt again. He's played in both games. I thought he looked okay against Luton, against Cardiff. I thought he was a little bit slow and he gave the ball away. But the difference is with, with Vout now, I feel like it's good that we've all ended on better terms, I think. I think a lot of us were quite harsh on him, myself included. The time when we when he left, when we originally got relegated, and then obviously there was the issue or potential issues, talk of issues with company from when he came back, but I'm not sure how true they actually are. But none of us expected him to wear the shirt again. And I like the fact that he's come back. He's clearly tried in both the matches. It's not like he's just coursed around and not get, not not you know not given a crap about the match. He's clearly tried. Um, and I did like a little bit because I'm one of them that tends to stay on the match until around you know, five, six, seven minutes after full time until the stands are pretty empty. Um, there were a bit where the subs were all warming down at the end of the match against Cardiff. Um, as he was warming down, he did the Ray, Ray, Ray to the cricket field end. And I thought that was nice, you know, it was a nice way to end it. Um, but yeah, another outgoing, but again, another one that I think will be okay with. I, I would have potentially liked to kept him uh, to have kept him in the championship. I thought he would have done well. But again, we've had this debate on some of the podcasts. Does he start? Probably not. He probably comes off on the off the bench, and Vegas is never going to be the person who, who 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 comes off the bench in the championship, especially when you've got giants like Ajax in the Eredivisie that that want him. So yeah, um, it's nice to draw a line under this one and just move on, and, and it's good that it's ended in a positive way. But 
Veg horse is going to Ajax by the looks of it. Right, some better news in terms of, well, some of you might see the, the Veg horse leaving news as good news, but some better news in terms of incomings. Fabrizio Romano reported quite late last night, actually around 9 p.m., that the Joe Worrell deal is expected to be closed in the next few hours. Now, like I said, this was over 15 hours ago, so it may well or may not, may, may well or may not, put my teeth back in. Uh, have, have been closed now obviously there's been nothing official yet of course there hasn't um, but I'm expecting a development on this one within the next you know within this day hopefully um, he's a good defender I, I, I like him I think he's, he's you know he will do very well in this league he's ready to slot in to O'Shea's position I think that's the only negative around this is that if Worrell's coming in, it's pretty certain that O'Shea's leaving I was told about a week and a half ago about Worrell that he was the person being lined up if we sold O'Shea um, and the fact that that is now very close would suggest that the club are expecting to, to, to lose O'Shea whether that be to Brentford or Wolves I'm not sure Ipswich are in the debate as well but he's already said that he he, he doesn't he would rather go to Brentford or Wolves who are you know two decent clubs to be fair um, but yeah Joe Worrell deal expected to be closed in the next few hours according to Fabrizio Romano so I guess on that one we will just have to wait and see to see what the situation is and hope that we get that done pretty soon because yeah it, it would it would make the the pain of O'Shea leaving a little less painful um, if we already had Worrell through the door so I think that's what, what the club are trying to do on that one. Sticking with potential incomings there's been a lot of talk about Mikey Johnson at Celtic um, I didn't actually mention this one on yesterday's show because it came from uh, I think it was Football League World um, or something like that a source that isn't necessarily uh, well trusted um, but then there was some reports this morning that we are apparently really far down the line with him and that. He's even having his medical with Burnley now. From what I have been told, the talk of a medical is incredibly premature, um, but we are looking at him. So there is genuine interest in Mikey Johnson um, for, for Burnley. He is kind of like a winger slash forward sort of thing. Was on loan at West Bromwich Albion, I believe it was. I'll just get it up on my screen now last season. Yeah, was on loan at West Bromwich Albion last season. Um 20 games, 7 goals, so that's not a bad record, just quickly got it up on my screen there, um, but yeah, apparently we are looking at him and you know, the, the, there is genuine interest from us, but uh, it's not that close, it's not as close as, uh, as Football League World or, or whichever source it was uh, uh, are making it out, and this has been reported by the way from other sources as well, it's not just me that said that, I, I did put it on Twitter actually, you may or may not have seen it, I did put like a thing up, the reason why I put this on Twitter is right, I saw the links to us this morning. I think it came from Clara Extra that posted it. Um, I'll, again, I'll just quickly get it up on my screen. Actually, now it was Clara Extra that posted it. Very good page, by the way. Um, I do follow um, them, and they are very good. Uh, it was Andrew Miller, NBA, whoever that is. Uh, a European football um, content person. Uh, works for News Betico. No, not heard of him. But anyway, he posted it this morning, so Clara Extra then reposted it and obviously put him as the source. Um, and then uh, I think it was the Burnley way just just tweeted something saying this is not true. Um, so then I asked the question and said, "What's the situation to this?" Um, to 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 one of the people that I speak to, uh, and they just put um, kind of like no sort of thing. Uh, and then I said, "Are we even looking at him?" And they said, "Yes, but it's absolutely nowhere near." Um, so it has been reported apparently on um, other sources as well that I was accused of copying um, but I, I just asked the question to my guy when I saw the Burnley way and Clara Extra tweet it if I'm honest with you um, and that's how that's how that happens or so, sounds like we are looking at him but it's it's not at the medical stage yet so you know we've got what 10 days left of the transfer window nine days uh, so fingers crossed we can get that one over the line because it's looking like you know we, we've spoke before there's a lot of links away about Zorora there's a lot of links away about Anas um, sorry, at Benson, they're the same person. Um, so it's it's it'll be good to get another winger in, even if it's just just for depth. Um, but he seemed to do alright at West Brom last year, and obviously they got in the playoffs, I think, didn't they? Um, so he seems like he's more than capable. So um, yeah, we'll have to wait and see on that one. Back to the outgoings now, but again, it's probably not one that too many people would be too disheartened with. I actually think he, uh, this particular player, has a big future ahead of him, and a lot of people are. A bit harsh on him because of the way he was treated by Vincent Company. I'm talking about Al Dakil, 
Obviously, again, I said on yesterday's show, and I was the first to report this one, by the way, so people can't accuse me of stealing this one. Uh, and I, like I said yesterday, Sasha then reported it 12, uh, nine hours later. Um, but I said yesterday that Aldakiel uh, would be one of the next out the door uh, with a move to Germany lined up. And again, like I said, Sasha then reported that last night, late last night, or was it the night? I can't remember. Um, but it's come out now from um, the well-respected journalist in Germany, uh, Florian Plettenberg. He says that Al Dakil will be going to Stuttgart, and that's a very good move for him. I I actually went on, I think it was the overlap, and I said that um, I believe that Amin Al Dakil has got a very big future ahead of him, and he will be one to watch um, for the time in the Premier League. Obviously, that bit was wrong. He was shocking in the Premier League. But he was played out of position. He was played in left-back, I think it was, or right-back. And he's, it, that's not his position. He's a centre-back. Now, I'm not suggesting he, he should have been playing ahead of some of the other players we have at centre-back. But I think it's ruined a lot of people's perception on him. He's a good defender with you know a good future ahead of him. And I would have liked to have seen him grow into that player at Burnley Football Club. But unfortunately not. It's looking like he's going to be uh, sold to Stuttgart. Um, and yeah, the news has come out about which club it is really. We all knew he was leaving, thanks to me. Um, but then obviously Sasha then confirmed it. Which, to be fair, obviously you, you're going to trust Sasha more than... Some middle-aged man in his in his spare bedroom, but um, yeah, it's it's a shame for me. I I like him. A, a lot of people give him a bit of grief because because like I said, he was played out of position last year in the Premier League. But when he's played in the correct position, he's a very good defender. I thought he would have been an asset to us in the Championship. Put it this way: when he played for us in the Championship last time out, yes, he wasn't the number one, um, you know, of choice at centre back. But when he had to step into centre back, because we did pick up a lot of a lot of injuries again that year at centre-back. He was more than careful and I thought this kid is very, very good. Um, so I'll be watching his career closely and it's, it's sad to see him leave, but yeah, it, it's it's stuck guard for Al Dakil. Final one from me then and it's on Anas Sorore. Obviously, there's been a lot of a lot of talk about Anas Sorore leaving Burnley in this window. A lot of pushback from fans as well and I get it because I think he was so good in the first half of that season uh, when we won the league, obviously scoring against Blackburn as well, so there is that connection. Um, but he's just he's just not found the, the same form has he since then. Ever since he came back from the World Cup, he's been pretty poor. Obviously, was loaned out to Hull as well last season. They don't rate him. Actually, when I put this tweet up um, from Sasha uh, saying that, um, I'll, well, I'll just read it to you now. Uh, Anna Sorori will sign for RC Lens, according to Sasha, or Lon in, in French. Um, agreement has been reached at €9 million. Euros. When I put that tweet up, there was a Hull fan immediately underneath it saying, wow, how have you got €9 million Euros for him? He's absolutely terrible. I was like, well, he's not. He's just not found the form. I'm not sure what it is. He was so good in the first half of that season, weren't he? Beating people for fun. Even the goal against Blackburn, it was an open goal in a way, because I think... Was it Barnes that hit the post or somebody hit the post and it rebounded to him? But to just have the technical ability to quickly guide that into the net, all right, a professional footballer should be able to do that. But I remember thinking, oh, he's done well there. Some Somebody like Chris Wood would have ballooned it over the bar, for example. Um, so it's a shame to see him leave. It hurts. But again, is he going to play too much in the season, this season? It's it's depth with Anas that worries me, obviously. But if we are bringing Mikey Johnson in and we do get that one over the line, then I guess it's that's light for light with that one. But um, yeah, Anas Sorori to RC Lens is the last one that I will chat about on here. But yeah, um, that's pretty much it. Apologies if I've missed anything. I will be back tomorrow. But again, with it being Friday, I will do a late one on Friday night to try and get anything in. Um, and yeah, you may be watching this when some of these things like Anas Sorori or, you know, like Joe Worrell, have all been signed, sealed, delivered and made official. We'll see. Fingers crossed you are, and if you are, I'll mention it in tomorrow's show.